Now, the mining tax did dominate political debate in Canberra today, and mostly because Kevin Rudd popped his head up again. Now, later in the show, I'll say what I pretty much have been for the past few weeks. The bloke is honestly off the reservation at this point in time, and the media just keep following him. At this point, he's more of a mouthy backbencher than a former Prime Minister, but that's the distraction. The front up, though, is that the Liberal Party decided to spend many a question in question time talking about the design and the failures of the mining tax. Now, it is very obvious. The mining tax has not taken as much money as the government had hoped it would. But that's a good thing. Remember, the Conservative side of politics believes that this particular tax is one that is going to hurt investment and potentially turn away thousands and thousands of jobs. It's important to note when it comes to the mining sector, while you think that, the, uh, that it is focused on just a small part of the country, people need to understand outside of the major capital cities, it's close to the biggest game in town. And fiddling with it isn't just fiddling with billions of dollars in potential revenue, it is also fiddling with thousands of people's jobs. But the Liberal Party seem absolutely hell-bent on trying to force the government to admit that it has made a mistake. I don't know why. And it exposes an ongoing problem for Tony Abbott and the opposition, one that they need to make sure they get on top of and get on top of tomorrow. It's called message control. Now, admittedly, we don't live in a day where you can talk about one thing for an entire week anymore, but surely we can live in a world where the opposition puts pressure on the government for more than just a couple of questions on one major issue. It's how you create a wedge and it's how you can drive home your advantage. Yesterday, Tony Abbott decided to move in the Parliament laws that would guarantee that basically unions would have to be run like companies. Union officials and dodgy ones would have to be as accountable as people who run companies or run on boards, but clearly stuff up and feather their own nest rather than taking care of their shareholders or, in this case, the members of the union. But there wasn't any follow-up today. Now, I know the news cycle does move on quickly. But the opposition shouldn't just jump at what is the outrage of the day. To build a narrative, they need to keep returning to the same subject. Not all day, every day, like the carbon tax. But they should have backed up today with yet another attack about union corruption. It's an area that, as I said last night, until the government agrees and decides to bring in its own laws or join up with Tony Abbott's, this is a very soft underbelly. The majority of Australians, even good union people, are tired of the rot and corruption that is in the Australian union movement, specifically on show in parts of the health services union, where we are not talking about a couple of thousand dollars, we're talking about a few hundred thousand dollars from the poorest workers in the country. If Tony Abbott truly wants to suggest that he is the working man's friend, why not talk about it for two days in a row? Why just run after today's outrage? Kevin Rudd kicking Julia Gillard would have been a story on its own. It didn't need the opposition stacking on. What they should have done is keep the pressure up about the role of unions and also the accountability of the people who run them. The only way to guarantee that something will change before September, and in the case of the Health Services Union, that is too late, is for pressure to be put on the government all day, every day for quite a few days. Then the Prime Minister, most likely, as they're probably going to do on the mining tax, will buckle and make a change.